We're interviewing uh, Mr. Frank R. Pusatier. It's August 22nd, 2001 at Latham Headquarters. Michael Akey, interviewer. Uh, Wayne Clark, videographer. Uh, Mr. Pusatier, where were you born? Troy, New York. Troy, New York. Okay. Uh, did you grow up in Troy? Yep. Went to school in Troy? Went to school in Troy. All the way, did you go to Troy High? Or no, I... Catholic High? I quit in eighth grade. Eighth grade. And okay. then I went back to school... Uh, well, I went to the arsenal. Okay. Got a, got a GED. Okay. Did uh, did you join the National Guard at all before? Yes. Well, when did you join that? September the twenty first, nineteen forty. Nineteen forty. Three weeks before we went away. Ah. Or before we got federalized. Now, why did you decide to join the guard? Because I know we were going to be federalized. I know we were going to Alabama. Ah. Uh -huh. And everybody said, "What a beautiful place Alabama was. <laughs> Romantic." Have a good time. I was all for it. Okay, this is going to be that kind of interview, isn't it? <laughs> um, so uh, you uh, you enlisted in the guard, right? And uh, they're up at the what, 15th Street Armory, right? I what was that. that like? I didn't spend much time up there. Uh, they let me go home after we got federalized. A lot of guys, they kept a lot of guys. I, I don't know how I did it, but I got to go home and go to bed, sleep in my own house for the week. From the, the day we got federalized to the day we got on a, get on the train to uh, Alabama, I went home every night. Mostly all the other people slept on the bunks or on the floor up there. Uh -huh. Now you were uh, in the 105th, what company? Company D. Company D. Okay. Um, so you, you got federalized and they decided to send you off to lovely Alabama. Uh, right. Fort okay. McClellan, Alabama. What was the trip down like? Two days on a train. Is that your first time away from home? Basically, yes. Okay. More than, you know, for more than a couple of days. But you were uh, amongst uh, friends? Uh, well, I knew a lot of people. Okay. That's one of the reasons why I joined. Okay. Um, so you had a two-day train ride, and uh, what did you think of uh, Alabama, Alabama when you arrived? Lousy. <laughs> it was cold at night and hot during the day. Hot during the day. You know, um, so what was basic training like? I never had basic training. You never had basic training? No. Uh, it was the National Guard, and a friend of mine told me, when they asked whoever had training, step forward, I stepped forward. Because they, a close order drill for ten, eight weeks, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And I, they said, they told me, I didn't know what, I didn't even know what close order drill was. And they told me, you wouldn't like it. And they were right. <laughs> so what did you do down in Alabama? Uh, within, Two months I became the bugler. Bugler? Nobody wanted the job. Mm -hmm. And this captain of Wally Veneer had a very, very persuasive way. Put his arm around me. He, I, he asked me. I said, no, I don't want to be. Because I heard it was kind of <laughs> tough. So he put his arm around me. He was a big, tall guy. He looked down at me. Frank, do me a favor, will you? Take it until the other guy gets better. I said, all right. The other guy never got better. But the job got better. Ah. No more basic training. We had some sergeant from headquarters company giving us basic training. Mm -hmm. After about a week, he went back to his old outfit, and nobody took care of us. So all we went and practiced an hour a day, did what we wanted to do. Okay. We had to be, when we learned, we had to be with the band, though. Mm -hmm. In the morning and, and the change of guard, which was a snap. So did you become a pretty good bugler? I would say, fair to Medlin. <laughs> Not real good, but good enough to pass. Okay. Uh, what'd you think of Alabama? We had a lot of fun. We were young, I was 18. Mm -hmm. Went out and drank a lot, caroused a lot. I liked it. Okay. Well, what'd you think of the South in general? Uh, they were awful stiffy in the beginning, awful stiff, and they loosened up. 
You know what loosens them up? Money. When, when we weren't spending any money in town, they all did everything in their power to bring us back. Uh huh. So um, you went on uh, the uh, <coughs> maneuvers in uh, Louisiana, Tennessee. Tennessee. Was the first maneuvers. We had six weeks of maneuvers in the, the red clay of Tennessee. What was that like? Lousy. Yeah. A lot of walking. The food was. We ate on the run most of the time. Mm -hmm. And Louisiana, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, Louis, let's see, the Louisiana maneuvers was a lot worse. Really? It was longer, dirtier. Well, you can imagine when you take a, you take a shower at a canteen. Any incidents you can recall in, the, in those maneuvers? No, just that we, we walked 115 miles in three days once. We ate breakfast in the dark, and we ate supper at the dark. Okay. And they gave us spam sandwiches for lunch. Now, uh, <coughs> one question I tend to ask anybody I meet from Troy is, uh, does the name uh, Mame Faye ring a bell? Mame Faye, now wait a minute now. Just, I think she, of course, <laughs> she was the biggest madam in the country of the whole country really no matter where I went I said Troy people said main Fay, California Alabama Texas no matter where I went really couldn't believe it now where'd she have her business you know what a police station is yes in Troy that block oh interesting I met her I don't remember how. That's okay. <laughs> now, uh, do you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Yeah. I was on guard duty. Really? I was bugling the guard that day. Mm -hmm. And somebody says, they just bombed Pearl Harbor. Everybody said, what's a Pearl Harbor? Nobody ever heard of it. Uh -huh. And uh, what happened the next day? <clears throat> That night we moved out. The next day we were in the dam. What's the name of it again? December seventh. Pearl Harbor was December seventh. That night we moved out. We moved out at ten o'clock at night. Okay. They told us to be prepared to move on an hour's notice, and eight or nine o'clock at night they said we're moving. Now, uh, Gun Gunnersville Dam. Okay. And you went and uh, guarded the dam? For five days. Well, what was that all like? Just walking guard duty. Just walking. Do, you, uh, do you recall hearing the term Ohio? Yeah. What did that mean? Home something. Over the hill in October? Oh, oh, yeah, over the hill in October. Uh, you think that was, what did you think about that? That was a joke. Okay. After guarding the dam, uh, what did you all do? We came back to Port McClellan and got ready to move out. Four days we moved out. Okay. Moved yeah. out to California. Out the what was the train ride like? Oh, boy. Crowded. Yeah. Sea rations. They fed us sea rations. You had four people in the seats. You couldn't sleep. You gambled most of the time. <laughs> Passed the time. It took five days. They stopped the train every day so, so you could walk back and forth, mm -hmm. get a little exercise. Mm -hmm. So once you arrive in California, <coughs> what... Uh... Uh, we did guard duty on the March field. Okay. Doing a lot of guard duty. And uh, how long were you in California, do you recall? Three months. We had six weeks in... Uh, Port Ord, six weeks in Camp Han. Now, were you training all that time or just guard, guarding them? Mostly guarding. Okay. We didn't start training until we hit Hawaii. Now, what was it like on the trip over to Hawaii? <clears throat> Lousy. We were on an English ship 
with Australian crew. And the food was out of this world. Not far enough out, though. <laughs> it was lousy. Really? Everybody complained. Nobody could eat. We ate, they had a bakery on a ship, and that's the old, we ate bread, and they served oranges with every meal. How'd you get along with the, the Australian crew? Not good. No? Not bad, but we didn't have that much to do with them. Okay. So you finally arrived in uh, Hawaii. <coughs> uh, what was that like? Wonderful. We went to town when we could. It was uh, something new. We saw all the girls, Oriental girls. We never saw Oriental girls, or very, very seldom. Right. You got to think back to 1940. Right. Wasn't many Orientals in, around this area. Now, where, uh, where in Hawaii were you? We went to Oahu, uh, the big island of uh, Hawaii first. And what were you doing there? Did a lot of training, training. amphibious training. Okay. What type of quarters were you? Uh... We moved about every five or six weeks, seven weeks. We were in all different. Well, first time we were in Pahoa, and we occupied a gym right across the street from the, from the school. Mm -hmm. And everybody loved it because they threw all kinds of parties for us, the Hawaiian people, or the natives, I should say. Okay. Because there's a lot of Orientals mixed in. The, uh, <coughs> now, what were your duties just besides Bugler? That was it. No, I became a radio operator. I became a radio operator. In Hawaii, I went to school to be a radio operator. Okay. And that was my primary duties. So uh, you trained in Hawaii for about how long? We stayed in uh, Hawaii nine months, I think. And then we went to the main island of Oahu. What was that like? About the same. About the same. We did a lot of training, a lot of guard duty. Any recreation? Besides oh, oh sure. We had the, the bowl. We used to go, there was... Uh, plays, there was wrestling, there was boxing, mm -hmm. when they could get tickets. Okay. Now, um, <coughs> any events, uh, any instances that stick out in your mind during your stay there? Just that we were always broke, never had enough money. Okay. Now, uh, when you uh, when you had to go overseas, uh, when was that? Do you remember? The time when? Did you mean when we went to Hawaii? No, after when we went into combat. Right. How was it? Well, do you remember uh, when it was? Forty four. It wasn't forty four. It was in June. We boarded the ships probably wait a minute, June the fifteenth. Was there much notice? There were rumors. Rumors. We boarded the ships probably ten, twelve days before that, maybe early in June, first, second, third of June. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea where you're going? Not then, no. We knew we were going in a fight someplace, but we didn't know where. They told us a uh, truck. That was a rumor. Okay. But we, we went to Saipan. What, uh, what was uh, life aboard ship like going over to Saipan? Real bad. Why is that? There was, uh, the bunks were this far apart. <laughs> the food was lousy, and the sun was hot, we wouldn't. What were the, uh, the latrines like on board ship? Not good. Not good? Adequate, Adequate. but not good. Okay. Uh, when you first uh, arrived off of Saipan, <coughs> uh, you, by that time you knew where you were going? Oh yeah, we knew the, about the third day out or fourth day out. Okay. 
And uh, did you make any preparations for landing? Were there any uh, intelligence briefings? Yeah, oh yeah, they briefed us a lot. Okay, what did they, what did they basically tell you? Told us we were going to get in Higgins boats and make a landing, but we never did. We never made the landing. The landing was already made when we went in. We went in two days later. Now, um, did they give you any idea of what you'd be facing? Not really, no. no. Okay, so you're off of Saipan. Um, <coughs> two days after the initial landing, you... We went in. We went, went in, in with in ducks. Okay. So pretty uneventful going... The Until we got in, and then we took the airfield. What was that like? Is that your first experience? In yeah, I, we saw a lot of dead people. What was going through your mind? When, is that all? Nothing really. You got to realize that you're real, awful hardened to it. Mm -hmm. All the training you did, and it didn't well, it bother some guys. It didn't bother me. So you were a radio operator uh, working with who? A lieutenant. My CO, he was a lieutenant. Who was that? Tommy Ryan. What kind of guy was he like? I liked him, but I think I was the only guy that liked him. <laughs> um, now, um, as a radio operator, <coughs> uh, what did you do? I radioed uh, for the the, the eighty-one millimeter mortars fire. When they uh, they used to fire their 81 millimeter mortars, we'd get back they're over or under. Okay, so he, he was a forward observer. Right. So you're right up front. I was up front all the time. Yeah, my company was always up front. The um, the fight at the airfield was pretty sharp. It was mild. The airfield was mild compared to later on. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what did you think of Saipan initially, your, your first few days? You really didn't think of it. You should, all you thought about it was staying alive. You didn't, you didn't bathe. You didn't shave. Mm -hmm. What you ate was, we had sea rations. Okay. What was, what's in a typical sea ration? Beans, hash, and cookies. Cookies. Not cookies. Hard tack, like hard biscuits. What did you think in general of the sea rations? They were lousy. Everybody else was getting K and ten and one rations, but we were we were eating sea rations. I don't understand why we got sea rations. Okay. Um, so after the fight for the airfield, uh, where did uh, the company go? We kept advancing. Kept advancing. Now you're basically going up the middle of the island at yeah. this point. What, yeah. what was the terrain like? This island terrain. Mm -hmm. On one side was mountains, the other side was the ocean. Okay. So you're between two marine units. The, no. The, the division was between them. No. Yeah. The second marine division landed on the other end of the island. They got stopped. They Garapan. Mm -hmm. The whole time the island we were fighting, they were stopped at Garapan. The 4th Marine Division was on the side, top of the mountain, or on the side of the mountain. And we come up between them and the ocean. Okay. Basically. Mm -hmm. What, uh, <coughs> what was the fighting like in general? Once you got beyond the air. Once somebody shooting at you. It's never good. Never good. Um, now, as a radio man, uh, you're fairly exposed. Yes. It's a big. I target. got I got my radio hit a couple of times. Okay. We 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 uh, bivouacked on the side of a hill, and every this is one of the reasons why nobody liked Lieutenant Ryan. He bivouacked us on the side of the hill, and in the morning we woke up, and there was all kinds of snipers up in the hill, uh -huh. and they were firing at us. And my radio got hit a couple of times. Hmm. Didn't hit the radio, hit the backpack. Okay. Hmm. And I wasn't too far away. <laughs> but I wasn't right there, though. So that's uh, one thing <coughs> that uh, they didn't like about the lieutenant. Because he bivouacked us there and he shouldn't have. Okay. 
He made a mistake. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, you, <coughs> you continue to move forward. Yeah. Uh, did you ever see many Marines while you were? No. Very, very few. Okay. Uh, now, by the. Uh, <coughs> give some water? No. By the time. Uh, for the. On the bonsai charge, that was uh, later on? That was July the 7th. July the 7th. And uh, where were you when that. Uh, On the front lines? In the front lines? With my company. With your company. You're still a radio operator at that point? I was on the front lines, but I was in the middle of the, our own perimeter. Okay. And what was, let's see, that was early morning. Yep. Can you remember the day before, anything uh, going the, on? Yes. The day before we bivouacked, they had tanks strategically placed, and every three or four minutes they'd fire, this tank is fire, that tank is fire. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said, what a, what a beautiful, safe spot we got. Mm -hmm. That was the day before. Uh -huh. The next day we didn't have nobody. The tanks left. Yeah, I don't know where they went. Okay. Now, uh, were you, <coughs> was this a, uh, a fairly new position that uh, you were in the day before? Every night, every day was a new position. Okay. And, um, so the day before you had the, the, the tanks were there, seemingly a, a good position, and then the next morning... They were gone. They were gone. Um, can you remember how the morning began? Which morning? The 7th? The 7th. Yes, I can remember distinctly. Okay. I heard uh, three, four hundred people running back toward me, saying, we ran out of ammunition. And when they got to me, if you looked out far enough, you could see Japs. And they were firing at us. So what's going through your mind at this point? We run like hell with everybody else. <laughs> but they, they, it wasn't, we weren't running, we were executing a strategic withdrawal. Okay, I understand. Um, so the whole line, uh, at this point it's not even a line, is it? No. It's just, the whole group is just moving back. Right. And, uh, moving, running. Right. The, uh, <coughs> and what are you armed with? I had a uh, carbine. A carbine? Um, so you could see your, the Japanese were... Right. I ran back, jumped at a foxhole with the sec from uh, one of the companies in the 2nd Battalion. Okay. And they had a light machine gun. Oh. And I said, they didn't know what was going on. I said, there are Japs out there. So I said, well, start firing. Mm -hmm. So I l fired a clip of my round, and they fired the machine gun. And then the hole got, we were in a foxhole, and got covered with fire from the Japs. Oh, really? And we had to lay low. And then after that happened, they stopped. They picked up, and they ran back. So the, uh, they evacuated that position, the, the machine gun team. Yeah, evacuate, that's a good word. <laughs> um, and you just thought it was best to go with them? Well, I didn't want to get left alone, which I did, though, later on. Oh, really? We ran back maybe 100 yards, and there was a long trench. Mm -hmm. it, it was a wasn't a man-made trench. It was like a hollow dugout. Mm -hmm. And I jumped in there, and I fired a 15 rounds from my carbine. And then I looked up to the left, I looked on the right, and nobody was there. I figured everybody was going to stay there. And that's when I got wounded. So about how close uh, was the enemy at that point? About two blocks away. Mm -hmm. <coughs> At this point, there was really no organized defense? No, there wasn't any organized defense all day long. So it was just a moving battle. Mm -hmm. um, 
All right. You you, you got wounded uh, with rifle fire? No, a hand grenade. Uh, knee mortar. Knee mortar. And um, <coughs> what happened when you got wounded? I put my hands on my face. I fell to my knees, and I started saying my prayers. And a medic came up. I don't know where he came from. I remember the guy's name, Rosie. Bandaged me and took me back, and then he, somebody else came and helped them. Mm -hmm. And I got back to the beach. And a friend of mine that I have, I've been with him all my life. I asked him to help me. I could hardly talk. He said, who is it? He didn't know who I was. Hmm. My face was all like that. Mm -hmm. I laid on the beach all day long. Probably about midnight they come and got us from the ocean with ducks. Okay. Was there fire on the beach? Some, yeah. Some. But <laughs> it didn't there any order fire on the beach? <laughs> didn't bother me, though. Okay. Because I was bad. I was, they get, somebody gave me a shot. And... Uh, I didn't feel, I knew what was going on, but I didn't feel nothing. Mm -hmm. So they evacuated you that evening? Yeah, around midnight. Okay, and where did they take you? To a hospital, field hospital. Okay, on Saipan? Yeah, and they put me under a truck, under a stretcher, and that's where they, where they stayed all night long. They come about noontime the next day and put me on a hospital ship. Okay, how was the care out in the field, in the field hospital? There wasn't any care. Nobody even looked at me. Really? So what's going through your mind at that point? Nothing. I was pretty much out of it. Okay. I could remember everything that happened, mm -hmm. but nothing bothered me. And uh, so you removed, they removed you to uh, a hospital ship? Yeah. Okay. How long were you on the hospital ship? Well, we went from Saipan to New Caledonia, 15 days. How was the care on board the hospital ship? Lousy. Took them three days to look at me. Really? Now, had you heard what had, <coughs> had happened on Saipan? Did you have a, a sense of what uh, all took place? Well, I know we, uh, yeah, I heard that later on. Okay. Not then. I did hear it later on, though. Okay. Um, so, how long were you in the hospital? At that time, a little over a year. I got wounded July the 7th. I got discharged July, July the 19th of the following year. Okay, you did get discharged. Where did they, um, did they send you stateside to a hospital? Yes, they sent me to Cushing General Hospital in Framingham, Mass. What was that like? Beautiful. Country club. Did uh, any other Saipan? Uh... I'm the only guy that I knew there from Saipan. Okay. The care there was uh, pretty good. Yes, very good. Um, you have any other remembrances of uh, the action on Saipan? Not really. Just that it was kind of miserable. They were dirty. You were tired all the time because mm -hmm. I was carrying like 60, 65 pounds. My radio weighed 38 and a half pounds. And all the grenades and ammunition. Mm -hmm. So, but when it came time to dig a foxhole, I was really beat. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> you were uh, discharged out of, from the hospital? From the hospital, yeah. Medical discharge. And what did you do after that? Went to work. Came back to Troy? I came back to Troy. War was... Uh, War was still going on. Okay. Uh, I think Germany surrendered, mm -hmm. but Japan was still active. Okay. Now, um, any fanfare when you came home? You just... Oh, no, I was coming home every weekend. Oh, you mean when I came home from... Yeah, all well, my family came up to see me, okay. which is 165 miles or so from here. Okay. Um, so after your discharge, you went <coughs> just directly went back to work. I stayed out for six weeks or so. 
Okay. And my father kept asking me, when are you going to go to work? <laughs> well, we had a produce business in Troy. Mm -hmm. And he, wanted, he kept asking me, when am I going to go to work? So did you finally go to work for your dad? Yeah. How long did you do that? Well, I was a partner. Okay. Until I got out. I got out in 1947. I worked two and a half years or so. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what did you just do? I opened up my own business. What kind of business? Food stand. Okay. Where about? 109th Street and 5th Avenue. Okay. Are you familiar with Troy? Mm -hmm. You know where Ken Goey has his Dodger, his yes. stands? Yes. That was my food stand. Oh, very nice. What are you? Uh, what are your general impressions of your military experience? I only remember the good parts. I don't remember the bad parts. Well, and there was a lot of bad parts, but I don't remember them. I don't want to not remember them. That's okay. Uh, was it a worthwhile experience in general? Hmm. It taught me a lot. What did it teach you? How to get along in life. How to interact with people. Mm -hmm. Good lessons. Any other stories you can think of? No, nope. that's about it. Any questions? For well, me? <laughs> Unless you want to talk about me and your boss uh, vying for each girl's attention or something. I've heard about that. <laughs> I mean it a lot. The training was uh, good training. Oh yeah. For the job. We didn't like it, but it was good training for the job. How was the equipment? Adequate. Of course, this is 1944. Oh, My SCR 300 I carried. Mm -hmm. If it carried a mile, it was a lot. Really? You got static after a mile. Uh, susceptible to uh, topographic conditions? Yeah. And so was the, the little hand ones we had. If, if they carried two blocks, three blocks, it was good. Really? I can't remember the name of them, but we had handheld ones too. Okay. Was there, um, now during the bonsai <coughs> attack, um, was there any radio communication? My radio got hit early in the morning. So you're basically just fighting to survive at that point. That's it. Um, can you think of any incidents that were memorable during that period? No. no. There's a lot of angry people <laughs> trying to kill you. Absolutely. And we were trying to kill them. Okay. Um, anything you remember about uh, the Japanese? I went out with a lot of Japanese girls in Hawaii. They were all nice. Okay. We learned some Japanese. Okay. Well, thank you very much, sir. Okay, Mike. My pleasure. And an airplane come by, and everybody, must have been 5,000 people shot at it. Machine guns, I shot at it with my rifle. We got it. Did you get credit for it? No. If I may, I don't know. Ask, excuse me. If I may uh, ask you a question. Did anybody ever mention the weapons the Japanese had? Twenty-five caliber. Not really. Not really. Well, see, the Japanese rifle. Maybe you ought to make another this one. The Japanese rifle is a thirty point one. Well, they had 25 they could use our ammunition, but we could not use it. Yeah, I've heard that before. Was I've that, read about that's that. That's a fact. Was that the Arasaka? Pardon? Was that well, called the Arasaka? Well, I don't know I the, the nomenclature of that crap, but I do know that's a fact. Huh. Yeah, they could use our ammo. And the funny thing is, uh, <coughs> now you must have recall this, during the night when there was infiltrations and things of that nature, remember in the morning if we had a... We're, we're, uh, we would uh, uh, we'd call back to get down to the main line of defense so we could rest, and then the following day we'd proceed again. And you remember seeing our cans of rations had holes punched in them? Rest. Our rations, our cans of rations. When you pull back the rest, what's that, what's that like? 
No. <laughs> we were never pulled back. Oh yeah, we fell back to different positions. The tree line, we go forward, you don't stay out in the clearing all night. We went back to the tree line. That's not retreating, but we're just going back to a defensive position. That's what we used to do. But you remember seeing the, our, our cans of key rations have bayonet holes in them? You don't see that? Mm -hmm. Even well, the Japs didn't want our food. <laughs> well, I, I would like to get a bunch of you guys together. I think that just the interaction would be interesting because you remind thing, each other of things that you may have uh, forgotten. Mm. You had a chance to put that together? It'd be kind of interesting, I guarantee you that. Okay. It's a darn shame that he won't go in. I know. Oh, geez, well, uh, see if you can work something out in the next month or so. Well, let this guy. I'll, look uh, I'll, look, I'll work on it. Okay. Uh, Frank, we have a little paperwork here. This is a, uh, a release form which gives the interview to us. Uh, if you have any restrictions on there.